What I want to do in this video is to give you an intuitive sense of how a market for currencies would actually work. And it's very non-intuitive for a lot of people because we're going to be talking about currencies becoming more expensive or cheaper or the price of a currency in terms of another one. And what I want to do is give you a very intuitive feel for that. So let's say the Chinese renminbi and the US dollar. And the unit of exchange in China is a little confusing because sometimes they use the word renminbi, sometimes the word yuan. The yuan is the unit of the renminbi. So let's say right now, let's say right now the quoted exchange rate is 10 yuan per US dollar. 10 yuan is equal to 1 US dollar. And every time I say dollar in this video, I'm referring to the US dollar. 1 US dollar. And I think this makes sense to a lot of people. If I have $1, I want to convert it to 1. I get 10 of them. If I have 10 won, I want to convert it to dollars. Someone's going to give me a dollar for it. Now let's imagine a situation, and in the next few videos, I'll construct actual trade, trade uh, imbalances where this would actually happen. But let's say we live in a reality where you know, someone has 1,000 won and wants to convert to dollars. Now let's say. On this side, and if we just superficially looked at this thousand won and looked at the quoted rate, we'd say, hey, that thousand won, you divide, you get 10 won per dollar, so that should be $100 at the quoted rate. But let's say you have two other actors over here, and obviously these markets involve many, many more than just three people, but this will help us simplify or at least understand how these exchange rates would work. Let's say that this person right here, say he has $100 that he needs to convert to. Yuan. Maybe he wants to buy some Chinese goods. Maybe he's a Chinese factory owner who sold his goods in the US for $100, and now he needs to convert it back to Yuan to pay his employees or pay his own mortgage or who knows what. And let's say that there's another person. She also has $100 that need to be converted into Yuan. So what's happening here? What's the total demand to convert Yuan into dollars and dollars into Yuan? Well, if you look at the whole market, you have $200 that need to be converted into won. And then on the other side of that transaction, we have 1,000 won need to be converted into dollars. So and for simplicity, these are the only actors. These, this, they are representing the entire market. Although as we know, the entire you know, in currency markets, especially there's, there's thousands or even millions of actors actively uh, participating in them. So what's going to happen? All of these people might just go on the, the, the internet and look up the current exchange rate, or the one the, the last exchange that occurred, and said, hey, you know what? Uh, me over here, this $100, I should be able to convert it into 1,000 won. But she also says, I should be able to convert this $100 into 1,000 won. So they collectively think that that $200 can be converted into 2,000 won. So I'll put this in question mark. So will they be able to convert this into 2,000 won? And on this person over here, you know, he's saying, well, you know, just at the current exchange rate, maybe I'll be able to get for my 1,000 won, maybe I'll get $100. But everyone wants to maximize the amount of the other currency they get, for obvious reasons. They want to maximize the amount of money they get. Now, will these two people be able to convert their money into 2,000 won? Remember, what I said is this is the entire market. And it's a huge simplification. But there is this imbalance here. More dollars into won than won into dollars. Now, they won't be able to convert into 2,000 won because there's only 1,000 won that wants to be traded. So you can imagine. This guy over here, maybe he wants to do it slowly just to kind of see what the market is like. So let's say he puts 10 won up, essentially for bid. You could view it either way. You could say that maybe one of these people put a dollar up for bid, and this guy is bidding on that dollar in terms of won. Or this guy is putting won up for bid, and these guys are going to bid on it in terms of dollars. Either one. And that's why it's sometimes confusing with currencies, because you're buying another currency. But since this guy is more in demand, to simplify things, I'll make him the person that's kind of able to create a an auction type situation, which really what is what the markets are, are trying to do, so that you can equalize supply and demand. So he he says, you know what, I'm willing to sell a hundred won for ten dollars, or offers I should say, offers to sell one hundred hundred won for ten dollars. He just thinks that that's a fair offer price right over there converting won into dollars. Well, what's going to happen? Well, one of these people is just going to jump at that. They say, oh, you know what? I think that's a fair price. And so let's say this woman right over here takes it. Then actually, both of them maybe have saw that offer to sell 100 won for $10. And they both try to click their mouse or however they're trying to make the transaction happening. But let's say she clicks her mouse a little faster, and she gets the transaction. Let's call this person B, and this is person A, and this is person 
C. So person B accepts. So two things happen just then. One is person C says, wow, that was pretty fast. Someone was very willing to take it for 10 won per US, per US dollar. And then this guy goes like, my god, I need to convert my money into won, but I wasn't able to. Someone else beat me to the punch. So this guy over here is not an idiot. He's like, hey, maybe people are willing to give me more dollars per won. So let's say that this guy right over here, he then offers to sell 90 won for $10. Notice, the price of the won has now go, gone up, or the price of the dollar has now gone down. Either one. Those are the symmetric statements. They mean the exact same thing. So all of a sudden, this person has a lot of dollars he needs to convert into won. So he accepts really fast. So person A accepts. And I'm doing a huge oversimplification, but it gives you the general idea to show you that this really is a market. Person A accepts. All of a sudden, we have a new quoted exchange rate. We, all of a sudden, we have an exchange rate of 9 wands per dollar. Now what's happening? And I think you see the dynamic that's going to happen. There's more dollars that need to be converted into won than won that needs to be converted into dollars. So this guy, as he sees that there's a lot of demand to get his 1,000 won, he's going to keep offering fewer and fewer wands per dollar. Or these guys are going to keep are going to start accepting fewer and fewer wands for each of their dollars. So as this happens, as the price of the wand will go up. Notice the price of the wand went up here. It was 10 wands per dollar, now it's 9 wands per dollar. Or you could say the price of the dollar has gone down. And this will just keep happening until all of them are able to get rid of their currency. And it's actually it's actually dependent there's no mathematical formula to say what the clearing price is. It's actually dependent on how badly each of these people are willing to transact and really how good they are at gaming each other. But the general result here, and this is the, the, the kind of what I really want you to get from this video, is that because there's no there's no law in a in a market exchange rate mechanism that says this has to be the exchange rate. We'll we'll explore uh, how you can peg it in the future, but there's nothing that says that this has to always be the case. If there's more demand for won than dollars, as we see in this example, the price of the dollar will go down, which is the exact same thing, which is price price of one will go up. In terms of dollars, price of dollars in terms of one will go down. And this is, this is the crux of foreign exchange. If you can at least internalize these ideas and to understand that there really is this market out here based on the supply and demand of one. Over here, the, the demand for one is exceeding its supply, so price will go up. And, or you could view it the other way, the demand for dollars is below its supply, so the price will go down. Anyway, I'll let you think about that for a little bit. In the next video, we're going to apply this concept to see how this freely floating uh, exchange rate can help equalize, or should help equalize, trade imbalances in an ideal world.